been 12 years since the Indianapolis Colts have beaten the New England Patriots. I live in New England. I'm a Colts fan. It's been devastating. It really has. But finally, we end up winning the game. Large part due to Frank Reich, the defense, and of course, the MVP of the National Football League, Jonathan Taylor, who leads the NFL in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns this season. 29 rushes for 170 yards and a touchdown. I'm not great at math. I believe that's about 5.8 yards per carry. I could be a little off there. The last MVP that was a running back was in 2012. That was Adrian Peterson. And of course, there's been some other guys, you know, like Ladanian Tomlinson. I'm sure Barry obviously has some MVPs and I don't know, like Walter Payton. There's probably been a couple guys and I, I can't really think of at the top of my head. As a guy that watches Tom Brady frequently, I've got him in a fantasy football league. He's put up great numbers. I just don't think he's more valuable than Jonathan Taylor. But MVP never has met the most valuable player. But even if we're going off of the numbers, it's not just about the numbers. It's also about like being valuable. It's kind of it's more about being like having the best numbers and being a quarterback. But the thing about it is the Colts they wouldn't be in the playoffs without Jonathan Taylor. I mean, he single-handedly carried them. Like, let's let's go back and look at some of these Colts games. So against the Seattle Seahawks, the first game, Taylor rushes 17 for 56. And then against the Rams, he rushes 15 for 51. Titans, he goes 10 for 64. And the Titans have given up 100 rusher. Uh, Miami Dolphins, 16 for 103. Baltimore, 15 for 53. And remember, I'm not even looking at receiving. And then we get into the, the Houston Texans. 14 for 145. The game after that, San Francisco, 18 for 107. And then we see him against the Titans again. Remember, they don't give up 100 rushers. 16 for 70. And then 19 for 172 against the Jets. Give or take is the Jets. But they're run, I mean, their run defense is it's the worst in football. Next, Jacksonville Jaguars, 21 for 116. Buffalo Bills, 32 for 185. Remember, the Bills, they have the... They rank 25th in... In run defense, so uh, that would be what seven, so seventh. They have basically the seventh best run defense, and then you see him against the Tampa Bay Bucks, sixteen for eighty-three, fourteen receiving yards, didn't quite get a hundred scrimmage yards, and then the Houston Texans, thirty-two for one hundred forty-three and two touchdowns. I'm not even counting the touchdowns. He obviously has the most touchdowns for all running backs, and if you compare him on average to every single running back that's ever won MVP, he's just a uh, touchdown below them. Well, actually. No, because he would be, wouldn't he be tied now? Because he had that touchdown, late touchdown. And then tonight against New England, 29 for 170 and a touchdown. And again, he has the game winning run. They were up by just three. And if he had not gotten that touchdown, who knows what would happen? The Patriots have won seven in a row. They haven't lost in two months. The Patriots would have been the one seed in the AFC with a win tonight. So it's clear. That Jonathan Taylor, when he gets over 100 yards, the Colts have never lost a game this season. And there has been games where he has not gotten over 100 yards because the Colts have six losses. But when they give Jonathan Taylor the ball and they scheme for him, they win. And if it wasn't for Jonathan Taylor, this team would not be good at all. Carson Wentz has been pretty good, but he's also been pretty bad. The defense has been good. It leads the the league in uh, takeaways and points off of them. Wide receivers, Michael Pittman's broken out, but they don't have much else outside of that. The offensive line's been banged up all season. It's finally back together and looks dominant. I just don't think there's a more valuable player, especially a more exciting player, than Jonathan Taylor in the National Football League right now. And it's from the eye test, and it's also from the analytics. I mean, Tom Brady's putting up, obviously, the best numbers as a quarterback, but it's just it's more impressive to me what Jonathan Taylor's doing as a running back for a Colts team that really no one had going to the playoffs. I mean, no one, yet alone, had winning this division. I don't, they're not going to win the division. It's, they're, eight, they're only two games above, and the Titans, they have somehow have managed to really just get through without Henry and Brown and some other guys. So um, kudos to them. But I'm just looking at Jonathan Taylor, and if the Colts make the playoffs, which it looks like they are, they still have, they have the Cardinals and the Raiders coming up. Two, I mean, the Cardinals, they could lose that. It's in, Even though the Cardinals are worse at home somehow, and then the Raiders, you never know the Raiders. That one game, they a couple of games they've looked the past couple of games they've looked absolutely horrendous. Like they've given up. They don't have rugs, they lost their deep threat. 
But even the Raiders are not a team you could just not show up against because they, they've got Derek Carr and they've got a couple of really good pass rushers and they got Nagoku, I believe is how you say it, and um, uh, Crosby, Max Crosby. But just, you know, I'm biased and I, I'm a huge Jonathan Taylor fan. He's my favorite player. Maybe Darius Leonard might be my – I think Darius Leonard is my favorite player. But, like, I mean, that run, I just can't remember as a Colts fan being more excited than that. I, I really can't. I mean, Andrew Luck – that Packers game, even that Packers, well, that wasn't, we didn't have Andrew Luck in that game, but, well, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, that Chiefs game, that comeback against the Chiefs, they're, yeah, they're just, there hasn't been a moment like that. I mean, this is the New England Patriots, like, Andrew Luck never even beat the Patriots. I mean, Jonathan Taylor, the defense is why we won this game, but it's also Jonathan Taylor, like, because if we, no, because if you think about it, if we didn't have Jonathan Taylor, like, offensively, no, we, yeah, bro, I think it's Taylor. Because if we didn't have Taylor in this game, like let's say like Marlon Mack was out there, who no dis- no disrespect, Marlon Mack's a good back, but if we had Marlon Mack out there instead of Jonathan Taylor, I, I bet you we this game we would have lost. And then also if we didn't have the elite defense, we would have lost too. But I mean, it's just Jonathan Taylor is just must see TV right now. I mean, the Patriots they don't give up a hundred yard rushers. I mean, this is the number one defense in football statistically, and most of you guys would probably say that. And Taylor just went out there and was just putting together some. And, and really impeccable runs. I mean, you just you don't see Jonathan Taylor not pick up yardage very often. He had a couple of runs tonight where he got hit behind the line because, I mean, they were just sending everyone. But he also had some runs where it was like he, he, one yard, and then he turns it into four, into five, and then into seven. And then they've got a stack box, and Taylor makes three guys miss, and he just breaks away for a 60-plus yard touchdown. So, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts on the video. I'm just I'm tired of the Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers MVP talk without Jonathan Taylor in there because – if we're going off of most valuable, like who's more valuable to their team? Jonathan Taylor to the Colts or Tom Brady to the Bucks? You might be like Tom Brady because of their record and they won the Super Bowl. But also like the Colts wouldn't make the playoffs and they would be one of the worst teams of football without Taylor. And the Bucks, if they didn't have Tom Brady, I don't know who their backup is. Oh, it's Kyle Trask. They drafted him in the uh, second round last year, right? Yeah, yeah, they drafted a linebacker in the first round. If they didn't have, if they had Kyle Trask, I mean, I don't know. I don't, they would be, they, I don't know. How, I don't honestly don't know how that would go. I don't know anything about Kyle Trask. I know he's more of like a pocket pad. He's not, a, he doesn't scramble or anything like that, but I'm not disrespecting Brady because he's the GOAT. I just don't know why running backs aren't mentioned in this because like a lot of people aren't even going to give Jonathan Taylor a chance because he plays running back, but he's the best running back in football. Tom Brady's the best quarterback in football, but who's better? Is it Tom Brady? Is it? I mean, you put Patrick Mahomes in that Bucks offense, or you, you know, you put uh, a guy like a Justin Herbert. Hell, you put Tua Tagovailoa in that Bucks offense. I mean, that's a stretch because, like, you know, Herbert and Mahomes are top five quarterbacks. But if you put like Tua, or you put a guy like, uh, you know, a Joe a Joe Burrow, and that will stick in that same class. How much worse would they be? I mean, that's what I'm saying. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the video. I'm signing out. Peace.